Regarding quality three, mm -hmm. what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth and love are always in perfect harmony and without truth, love cannot be complete? Mm -hmm. What does that understanding look like in my personal life? So now we are asking this question from a personal perspective, okay? What it, what it, what it looks like personally is this. I will never accept inside of myself a teaching that is out of harmony with love. I would never hold on to that teaching. I would never take actions about that teaching that are out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. So if I was in this space properly, I would never resort to violence about something that I believe. I would never even yell at somebody about something I believed. I would hold on to the fact that love needs to always be present when truth is present. So I would never revert to violence if I truly felt in my heart that this was true. Now, if you look at the history of re or the religious history of humanity, almost every religious faith has, without fail, reverted to violence at some point in its history because other people did not believe what it believed mm -hmm. or what it stated you should believe or what it stated you should do. Love would not do that. Love would not ever revert to violence. And so therefore the teachings that they, they were reflecting cannot be true yeah. under, this, under this rule, uh, this principle of divine truth. The teachings cannot be true. Only the, t the only teachings that can be true are the ones that promote love. Mm. The only teachings that can be true are the ones that promote understanding, that promote the ability to live in the universe in a happier way with more contentment. They're the only teachings can, that can be true. This is why there's a lot more scientific truths than there are religious ones on the planet at the moment, because more of them have resulted in an easier life, a better life for many people on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> and therefore, they are more in harmony with love than the religious teachings that people proclaim are about God. Mm. And so, you know, this is one of the primary things that would happen. I would see any time I resort to violence, any time I resort to anger, any time I resort to frustration, any time I try to, by force, control somebody else with regard to the truth, I'm out of harmony with love. Therefore, what I'm doing isn't the truth. Yeah. I've got to change yeah. if I really want to become in harmony with God. Mm. Okay, so what about when, with regards to our relationship with God and receiving love from mm -hmm. God, I, wouldn't, I also wouldn't expect to receive love from God if I am avoiding truth in my personal life, would I? Exactly. So you get to a point where you're going, okay, I don't want to know this, I don't want to know that, I don't want to know this, please God, give me some more love. And, and probably not receiving any in that place. You wouldn't be feeling like you're receiving any. I'm, pro I'm it, definitely sure yeah, of that. Yeah. And, and then you go, oh, it's all God's fault. <laughs> that I'm not receiving God's love. Or it's not fair. Or it's not fair. Yeah. Or it's not whatever. Yeah. No, it is completely fair. You're yeah. not being, you're not wanting to live in harmony with love. Yeah. How can you expect to receive more truth? Yeah. And if you're not willing to receive more truth, how can you receive more love? Yeah. If you're not willing to live in harmony with the truth you already know, then how can more love come to you? Mm. It can't. Mm. So, Stop trying to bend the rules. <laughs> yeah. Stop trying to, you know, circumnavigate God's way, which is always to confront this, this, this beautiful quality of divine truth, which is truth and love will always be in harmony. You need to bring yourself into harmony with the love you've received mm. if you're ever going to receive more truth and love. Mm. So do it. <laughs> choose to do it. Don't choose to avoid it. Don't try to get away from it. Don't, don't use your will in a negative manner to harm others or harm yourself. Choose to do something that's harmonious with love, even harmonious with love of yourself. And that is be in harmony with the truth you know you need to be in harmony with. Yeah, and I suppose I think about this on a very personal level, that if I know if love and truth are harmonious... How can I say that I'm a loving person if I'm not truthful about what's inside of me? Exactly. How can I say I love you if I'm not being truthful to, to you? Exactly. How can I um, uh, be in a, any kind of social... How can I love the government familial? if I'm not true with the government, truthful with the government? Yes, any kind <laughs> yeah. of relationship yep. if I'm avoiding truth within that relationship. If I know that love can't be present unless truth is present, then... 
that really changes a lot of the ways we analyse what it means to be loving, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because a lot of us feel or have been raised to feel that it's loving to withhold truth. Exactly. Like we've been raised to think the opposite thing of God, that God believe, it has created as a fact in the universe. And so can you uh, maybe talk to us a little bit about this um, idea that is that kind of drives that thought, that when I say the truth, it creates pain, not love. So why, yes. do, we, why do we believe that? Well, we believe that because the error within us was created over a long period of time, and the error is very painful. It mm. causes all sorts of immediate painful results. But unfortunately, we have a tendency to desire to live in it because the world lives in it. Mm. And so what we do then is we absorb it, we, it becomes a part of our life, and it becomes a part of our self-definition. It becomes a, what we believe to be a part of ourselves. And when you've got to give up what you think is a part of yourself, it's going to be painful mm. in, in a process. Now, the truth, God's truth when it comes, exposes this error. And this is one reason why we believe the truth is painful, is yeah. because it actually exposes error. It makes us see the truth and therefore causes us to have to feel the pain of the error. Mm. And then we go and make this mental association and heart-based association that, oh, the truth caused my pain. No, it did not. It was the pain was caused by the untruth present. And the, if, if the truth was present and there was no untruth present, you would have no pain. So if I can give an example of that in a person's day-to-day -day life, let's say they're in a relationship and a husband and wife relationship, mm -hmm. let's use an, as an example, and the husband decides he's going to cheat on his wife and then he decides that he's not going to tell her and then he decides that he's going to do it again and not tell her and do it again and not tell her, right? So, so she's oblivious to the truth. But there is already pain being created in a relationship, in the husband, in his heart, in the woman who's connected to the husband in, in, in the sexual relationship that's not a part of her, his relationship with his wife. And all that, there's all this pain already being created. Mm -hmm. right? He's oblivious to it because he doesn't want to face the fact that love and truth would be acting in harmony with each other. Yeah. He doesn't want to tell the truth to anybody. He doesn't want to tell the truth to the woman that he's not going to leave his wife because of security reasons or whatever. He doesn't want to tell the truth to his wife because then his wife may leave him and then all of his security issues may be triggered and then all mm -hmm. the half of his wealth may disappear. And so what he does is he keeps this thing happening on the side without telling any truth. Now, when somebody comes along who notices it's happened and tells the wife that it's happened, at that point she will feel a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. If she's not careful, she will believe that it's because somebody told her the truth. It's not because somebody told her the truth. The reality is if somebody told her that and it wasn't true, it would cause her no pain at all. Uh, if it wasn't true, it wasn't happening, it would cause her no pain at all. Mm -hmm. It's only going to cause a pain if it actually is happening. Because? Uh, because it's the error that creates the pain. It's Not, exposing. It's exposing what's the pain. The there. truth exposes the error, but it's the error that created the pain. Yeah. It's the fact that he cheated on her that makes her feel hurt. Yeah. If he didn't cheat on her, she wouldn't feel hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but a lot of times we don't want to know the truth. And this is a big problem on the planet too. We need to understand that the desire to know truth is directly connected to the desire to love. Yes. We need to have both if we're ever going to live in a loving society. We see on the planet with the media, for example, we, that, that the media is willing to feed us lies and we're willing to take them, right? And we've got to ask ourselves the question, is this loving? Mm. It's not loving to anybody. Taking a whole heap of lies and feeding people lies is not loving either. So, so we need to have more of this honour of the connection between love and truth. Now, if we did that, if we actually felt that in our soul, mm -hmm. we would never be able to lie about anything we've done, even if what we've done might cause the breakup of our family, might cause us to lose our job, might cause us to be in jail for a while, might cause us to do lots of things, if we tell the truth, we would never avoid it. Because we would know that our love cannot be real. And also our love and can never grow by avoiding it. Yeah. We know that. The other thing um, that occurs to me as you're talking about all of that is that 
having a soul-based understanding of this truth would lead me to know that if someone is telling me a truth and I have pain about it, that that's exposing an area yes. where I don't have love. Exactly. It's similar so, to so what you were saying a, earlier. Let's give the similar example, shall we? Oh, okay. Uh, like, you yep. know, the example with the husband and with his wife. If she feels that someone telling her the truth, let's say he's not cheating on her, mm -hmm. and yet someone comes along and tells her that he is, and she gets all hurt, mm -hmm. then that's her hurt. There's something inside of her that is caused by a lack of love within her that causes her to feel that hurt. And she would understand that. Y yes. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. So just perhaps to finish off this point, uh, maybe just let you know some of the other notes that you've written here and mm -hmm. perhaps you'd like to talk to them. Mm -hmm. So when we have a soul-based understanding of this truth, then we don't have a desire to convince ourselves that we're receiving divine love when we're not. Mm. So it's like, it's like, how can you continue to receive divine love when you know you're out of harmony with truth on certain subjects? You can't. And if you're trying to convince yourself you're receiving divine love when you know you're out of harmony with truth, then you're receiving something else other than divine love. <laughs> you know, it could be connections with spirits or it could be your own imagination or whatever. You're definitely not receiving God's love while you've chosen to be out of harmony with truth. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and um, I don't wish to help others avoid the truth that they're not receiving divine love. Yes, it's sort of like this, uh, I see this happening quite a lot, particularly in religious circles, you know, particularly in the Christian religious faith where a person receives divine love to a certain degree and because of their feelings for God and their feelings for the desire for that love, but, but then there's certain truths they don't want to accept. They want to believe in the Bible. And as I've pointed out in previous answers, the Bible is not a great record of God's truth. And it's also not very loving in many places. But they might want to believe in the unloving passages mm -hmm. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. In the process of wanting to believe in that, they are blocking the reception of more love, of more love from God. And also they are blocking the absorption in their soul of any truth. So what are the truths that, of God's laws about these particular subjects? They're blocking all the knowledge of that. Under those circumstances, they still want to believe they have a continually growing connection with God. Mm -hmm. But they need to be told the truth. A continually growing connection with God is only possible by continually growing in connection with truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the universal absolute truths, not the ones that are contained, the so-called truths that are contained within a written book, but the actual universal truths. The other ones you're going to have to conform to at some point. So we need to stop telling each other that we're going okay when we're not. And we need to be honest with each other with the fact that unless we receive more truth, unless we live in harmony with the truth we know already, and unless we're willing to examine what we believe is truth in the light of love and change our opinions based on what love would dictate, mm -hmm. then it's impossible for us to continue growing. We are going to stagnate. And this is why I notice many religious faiths, they have an initial improvement in the reception of love. So they receive some love from God in, initially when they find the faith or in the short periods after. And then they stagnate because they get into fixed belief systems which oppose the absorption of love. They oppose, they're not in harmony with love. And in fact, when we act upon them, we actually ourselves are out of harmony with love, mm. which has its own compensatory effects. Mm. And as a result of that, we're not absorbing truth either. We're not, we're not living in harmony with truth. We're not understanding this soul-based thing that we need to understand, which is love and truth are perfectly aligned with each other. If there is a truth that's out of harmony with love, then it's no longer a truth. It's just an idea, a concept, a man-made concept. It's not an absolute truth of the universe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you.